Boris Johnson has said that it is sad to see through so many projects and ideas as he announced his resignation as Tory party leader. The PM was greeted with cheers from family and staff as he made his resignation speech outside number 10. He claimed that he had tried to convince his colleagues that it would be unusual to change leader and blame the herd instinct in Westminster for his departure. He also hoped to stay in office until his successor is chosen. A timetable for a leadership contest would be announced next week. The winner of that contest will become the next Prime Minister of the UK. However, Mr. Johnson is facing calls to leave number 10 immediately. These calls are also coming from former Conservative Prime Minister Sir John Major. In a letter to party bosses, Sir John said the leadership contest should be boosted up, or if not, Deputy PM Dominic Robb should take over as caretaker PM. Mr. Johnson's exit has followed a mass revolt by ministers over his leadership sparked by the surprising resignation of Chancellor Rishi Sunak and Health Secretary Sajid Javid. He avoided calls of newly appointed Chancellor Nadhim Zawahi for 48 hours until it became evident that he had lost the confidence of his party and could not continue. Speaking outside Downing Street, he said he had secured an amazing mandate in the 2019 general election by winning the biggest conservative majority since 1987. Boron said that the reason he had fought so hard in the last few days to continue to deliver that mandate in person was not just because he wanted to do so, but because he felt it was his job, his duty, his commitment to people to do what they promised in 2019. He regrets that he has turned out to be unsuccessful in those arguments, but believes that the will of his party was clear. In politics, no one is remotely indispensable. Boron wants people to know how sad he is while giving up the best job in the world. He said he was also proud of his achievements in office while referring to taking the UK out of the EU, the government's reaction to COVID, and rolling out the vaccine program. He also said that he had led the West in standing up to Putin's invasion in Ukraine. While addressing the Ukrainian people, he said, We in the UK will continue to back your fight for independence for as long as it takes. President Volodymyr Zelensky lauded Mr. Johnson for realizing the threat of the Russian Federation and always being at the forefront of supporting Ukraine. Mr. Johnson also thanked his wife Carrie and their children as well as the team of Downing Street. He complimented the British people for the immense privilege they have given him. He promised that he and his cabinet would continue to serve the country until a new leader is appointed. He has restored available posts in his cabinet, which we'll meet later. But he still faces a challenge in replacing the raft of more junior ministers across different departments who have resigned to push his exit. Mr. Johnson came to power in July 2019 and six months later won a huge majority in a general election. However, he has been dogged by debate in recent months including a fine for violating his own lockdown laws and his handling of the allegations against former Deputy Chief Whip Chris Pincher. The PM speech was counted short, but his departure from office is not going to be swift. He wants people to know that his resignation was the fault of his colleagues. The herd, as he called it, had moved rapidly, despite winning the biggest majority at the 2019 general election since 1987 and captivating new voters to his party. The subtext is that the union of voters, including former Labour supporters, that he gathered in 2019 may break up without him to keep it together. Boron also referenced the bad press he obtained recently, but didn't spend long on any of the mistakes he may have made in office and which ignited mass resignations and a vote of no confidence. He just admitted he hadn't convinced colleagues that he should remain in office. He will stay on until a new leader is chosen, but it is the Backbench 1922 committee that will authorize the timetable, and while some MPs want it to happen fast, he is going to be in office until the autumn. With new cabinet ministers in place, it does not look like he is in a hurry to leave. He will expect a legacy that isn't blurred by the past few days. The Conservative Party will now carry a leadership contest to find a replacement for the departing leader. Attorney General Suella Braverman is the only Tory MP to announce that she will stand, while Steve Baker has also said that he is considering running for it. They are predicted to be joined by more candidates in the coming days. However, the Deputy PM Dominic Robb has ruled himself out. Some Conservative MPs have expressed concern about Mr. Johnson's stay in office until the autumn. One MP claimed that he had lost the trust and authority required to continue. Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer explained that Mr. Johnson should step down quickly, and if he did not do so, Labour would hold a vote of no confidence in the government in Parliament. If the government lost the confidence vote, it could lead to a general election. However, in order to pass, a huge number of Conservative MPs would have to support the Labour motion. Boris Johnson was forced to resign as UK Prime Minister as dozens of members of his party left the government. His popularity outside Parliament has also been badly dented by rising inflation and stagnation in the British economy, 
cost of living crisis that is frightening to impoverish millions more people this winter, and the threat of a damaging trade war with the European Union. UK stocks rose in response to reports that Johnson was preparing to stand down. The pound earned 0.75% to trade at $1.20, while recovering slightly from two-year lows hit earlier this week. Whoever will emerge from the rubble of his administration as new leader of the Conservative Party and the country will have to encounter a series of extraordinary economic and financial challenges. Every major economy has suffered from the pandemic's remaining effects on supply chains and the impact to energy and food costs delivered by Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February. But the UK situation is worse than most of its companions. Inflation has touched a 40-year high of 9.1% in May, which is the highest among the G7 leading economies, and has forecast a climb above 11% later this year, despite a series of interest rate hikes. The knock-on effects of Brexit, Johnson's signature achievement in government, have heightened maiming labor shortages and boosted operating costs for businesses. The cost of imports has also been driven higher by a sharp fall in the price of the pound this year. The rise in food and fuel prices has developed the worst cost-of-living crisis in decades, causing lower-income households to choose between heating and eating. There is a rallying cry for anti-poverty campaigners as they are requesting for more government support. Johnson's government promised $502 in grants per family to help out the millions of people who are struggling to pay their energy bills. It also leaned to pressure last month and revealed a $6.3 billion tax on the windfall profits of oil and gas corporations. However, those efforts are being swallowed up. Disposable incomes are on track for the second biggest fall since records started in 1964, driven by the rising cost of energy and food. And those bills are about to get a lot more terrible. Annual average household energy bills could also increase by almost 50% to $3,600 this winter when a cap on the maximum price suppliers can charge customers is modified in the fall. The regulator already raised the cap by a whopping 54% in April. British households have been left exposed by a constant decline in living standards. Regular wages are not higher compared to the 2008 financial crisis. Britain's bad recent record on living standards is the complete collapse of income growth for poor households over the past 20 years. This must be turned around in the upcoming decade. The world's fifth biggest economy landed to a halt in February and began shrinking in March. The decline accelerated in April when GDP was calculated to have fallen by 0.3%. The three major sectors of the economy, including services, manufacturing, and construction, also started going backwards. Weak growth is bad news for government debt, which has shot up more than 90% of GDP as a result of steps taken to help businesses and households to cope up with the pandemic and the energy crisis. There is very little room for the next prime minister to make big tax cuts or spending agreements. This all adds up to a challenging outlook for future governments as they drive the UK economy and public finances in the upcoming years. What are your thoughts on this situation? Tell us in the comments section below. With that being said, it's time to end our today's video. Press the like button and subscribe to our channel for more interesting stuff. Peace out. Interesting stuff.